Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have sine x cubed plus cosine x cubed divided by sine x plus cosine x equals 3 over 4. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, we could go ahead and try to cross multiply here first. That's going to give us 4 sine cubed x plus 4 cosine cubed x equals 3 sine x plus 3 cosine x. And then we can kind of put together um, everything on the same side. 4 sine cubed x plus 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 sine x minus 3 cosine x is equal to 0. And we could try to factor, but it's not really going to help because we already cross multiplied and got this expression. But we could try to solve it as a cubic equation, right? So one of the identities that we can use is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. And so we can express one of them in terms of the other. So we can write cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared. But guess what? We don't have that in our expression. We don't have a quadratic term. We only have a cubic and we have a linear term. So how do you handle something like this? So there's a couple different ways to go about it. We can basically solve for cosine from here. That's going to be the plus minus the square root of 1 minus sine squared x. Obviously, there's going to be two options here. We can try both. But if you just take one of the, these options, like cosine x, suppose it's equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared x, then we can pretty much uh, substitute that here and here. And then everything is going to be in terms of sine. The problem is uh, we're going to have to deal with lots of radicals. But let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And for uh, simplicity's sake, I want to set sine x equal to s, which is something that I often do, and cosine x equal to c. That's going to give me 4c cubed plus 4 times cosine cubed. Cosine cubed you can also not write as cosine squared times cosine, which is uh, this times sine. So you can kind of write it as sine times, uh, actually sine squared times square root of 1 minus sine squared, and I was going to use an s, so 4s squared times square root of 1 minus x squared. It's going to be this part, and of course we have a 4 in the front, good, minus 3s, and then plus or minus 3 cosine, and that will be 3 times the square root of 1 minus s squared, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Now, since we have radicals, let's go ahead and put them together. So I can write it as 4s squared minus 3 multiplied by square root of 1 minus s squared. And we can kind of set it equal to 3s minus 4s cubed. Does the right-hand side remind you something? Well, if you are familiar with the triple angle formula, it should. But anyways, that's a different story. We're going to go ahead and look at it differently. So now this equation is in S only, which is nice. But again, this is one of the branches because uh, we also have the minus version, which you can do easily uh, with, you know, slight modifications. Now we can go ahead and square both sides. That's going to give us 4S squared minus 3 squared times 1 minus S squared, 3S minus 4S cubed squared. Now you're going to get like a, a fourth power and then a sixth power from here. And their product is just going to be, this is going to be 16s to the fourth minus that times s squared is going to give me negative 16s to the sixth power. And when you do that here, you're going to get positive 16s to the fourth power, uh, s to the sixth power. So they're actually not going to cancel out. This is going to be negative s to the sixth. This is negative 16x to the sixth. You're going to put them on the same side. I was hoping that we could get rid of the hexic term. But that's going to be kind of hectic, right? So this is not a good idea. So let's just call this first method. And you see, it's kind of cumbersome and not very uh, conclusive. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Why did I show you the first? Because sometimes you may want to turn this into a cubic or quadratic equation and just solve it from there. But here's what we're going to use. Let me write the original problem, sine cubed x. plus cosine cubed divided by sine x plus cosine x equals 3 over 4. One thing that you should always remember is called sum of two cubes. And that's what we exactly have here. Look at that. 
a cubed plus b cubed. How do you factor a cubed plus b cubed? You can write it as a plus b multiplied by a squared minus ab plus b squared. How do you think they came up with this formula? You can cube a plus b and then kind of factor the terms in the middle, which is something that I often use, and then you're going to end up with this. Anyways, let's go ahead and factor the sum of two cubes, sine x plus cosine x. And then the other factor is going to be sine squared minus sine x cosine x. Again, I could use the SC notation, no big deal. Cosine squared all over sine x plus cosine x. Now, one condition that I need before I start canceling things out, that sine x plus cosine x should not be 0. And let's go ahead and take a look. When does this sum equal to 0? If sine x plus cosine x is equal to 0, that means one of them is kind of like 1 and negative 1. It's usually, so here's the thing. If sine x is less than 1, uh, then cosine x is actually going to be greater than negative 1, and their sum is not going to be 0. It only happens when we have a 1 and negative 1 and negative 1 and 1 situation. In other words, if tangent is negative 1, we get, the, uh, we get this case. So uh, you have to exclude these solutions. When is a tangent negative 1? If when x is equal to 3 pi over 4 or x is equal to, what was the other one? 7 pi over 4, right? And the second and fourth quadrants because first and third tangent is positive. So those have to be excluded if they ever come up. Under those conditions, we can go ahead and cancel these out. And remember, this is equal to 3 fourths. So now we have a simpler equation, sine squared x minus sine x cosine x plus cosine squared x equals 3 fourths. Awesome. Now, there's a couple of ways to go about solving this system, or I mean not system, this equation. We could go ahead and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared again, but uh, I don't think that's going to be very helpful because we still have the sine x times cosine x. But there's a much better way to do it because these two add up to 1, right? Remember the Pythagorean identity? So we get 1 minus sine x cosine x equals 3 fourths. And from here we get the following, sine x cosine x equals 1 fourth. Awesome. This is the equation we're going to solve and it shouldn't be too hard, would it? How do you solve it? There is a couple of ways to go about it. Let me show you both. First method, you can call this 2a, right? The first method is I'm going to square both sides. And then I'm going to replace uh, cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. And then set the sine squared equal to y. And that's going to give me a quadratic. You don't want to get a quartic. y minus y squared is equal to 1 over 16. If we put everything on the same side, y squared minus 1 plus 1 over 16 is equal to 0. So y is equal to sine squared x. So if we can solve this quadratic equation. y is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 1 minus 1 fourth. That's going to be 3 fourths divided by 2. And that's going to be y equals square root of 3 over 2, that divided by 2. And then this is going to be, if you make a common denominator, y is going to be 2 plus minus root 3 over 4. Awesome. Now, this is sine squared. Remember, y is equal to sine squared. So we're going to set this equal to sine squared. So sine squared x is equal to 2 plus minus root 3 over 4. Notice that 2 minus the root 3 is also positive, so we're going to get two solutions from here. But here's how we can solve it. You can square root both sides. But to square root both sides, how do you square root both sides? Well, the square root of 2 plus root 3 is kind of easy, but if you multiply by 2, that's going to be a little easier. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 2. That's going to give us this. And then we can go ahead and square root both sides. And let's go ahead and po go with the positive square root first and also take the positive one like this. And it's going to be 2 root 2. Notice that the expression inside the radical is root 3 plus 1 squared. Do you see that? So when you square root it, you're going to end up with root 3 plus 1. And sine x from here is just going to be root 3 
plus 1 divided by 2 root 2. And if you multiply this by root 2 over root 2, you're going to get root 6 plus root 2 over 4. I hope you do know that this expression is actually sine of 75 degrees. In other words, it will be 2 pi over, wait a minute, 5 pi over 6, right? Is that right? Okay. 5 pi, over, 5 pi over 6 is actually 150, so 5 pi over 12, that's what I meant. 5 pi over 12 is going to be one of the solutions. And obviously there's another one, which is in the, well, it it's going to be first and second quadrant, but I don't think we have a solution. Well, first quadrant is uh, 75, and the second quadrant is just going to be 150. You have to subtract it from pi, which is going to um, give you, really, 5 pi, pi minus Pi over 6, 30 degrees. Okay, no, not, no, that's not possible. Anyways, <laughs> hopefully you get the idea. Okay, I did it again. It's not 5 pi over 6, it's 5 pi over 12. That's why I wasn't getting it. Now, if you subtract this from pi, um, then you're going to get 7 pi over 12. There's some, it's supposed to be pi. Makes sense? So, I mean, how do you know that's the case? Um, you can look at the double angle formula, which kind of brings us to 2b, or not 2b, right? That was 2a, now we're going to go with 2b because 2b is more fun, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So for our 2b method, uh, we're going to do the following. Whenever you see sine x times cosine x, you should immediately double both sides. Why? Because that gives you the double angle, that's why. Double, double angle. So the left-hand side is sine of 2x, and the solution of this equation is fairly easy. You can say, hey, 2x can be uh, 30 degrees, which is pi over 6, plus... 2 pi n, from here we get x equals pi over 12 plus pi n. Obviously, we got pi over 12, or 5 pi over 12, but that, the other one is going to come from the other solution. So that's one of the general solutions. Or you could say pi minus this, because it's sine 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, and then from here you're going to get x equals 5 pi over 12 plus pi n. If you replace n with 0, you're going to get 5 pi over 12, otherwise you're going to get 17 pi over 12. Okay, with this one, you're going to get pi over 12. Okay, let me see. Here we go. This gave us these two solutions. And then from here, we're going to get pi over 12 and pi plus pi over 12, which is 13 pi over 12. You, does, does that make sense? Pi over 12 is one of the values that we found. And as you can see, these are the exact same solutions. So, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.